optimizing a lift and shift for cost effectiveness and ease of management. Lift and shift is a process of migrating a workload from on-premise to AWS with little or no modification. A lift and shift is a common route for enterprises to move to the cloud and can be a transitionary state to a more cloud native approach. A key concern that many customers have with a lift and shift is cost. If you move an application as is from on-prem to AWS, is there any possibility for meaningful cost savings? By employing AWS services and by leveraging self-capability such as auto-scaling, self-managed EC2 instances, there is a potential for significant cost savings. In this tutorial, we will discuss a number of AWS services and the solutions that you can leverage with minimal or no change to your application code base in order to significantly reduce management costs and overall total cost of ownership. Even if you cannot modify your application, you can change the way you deploy your application. The adopting an infrastructure as code approach can vastly improve the ease of management of your application, thereby reducing cost. By templating your application through Amazon CloudFormation, Amazon OopsWorks, or open source tools, you can make deploying and managing your workloads a simple and repeatable process. As a part of lift and shift process, rationalizing the workload into a set of templates enables less time to spend in the future deploying and modifying the workload. It enables the easy creation of development and test environments, facilitates blue-green testing, opens up options for DR, and gives the option to roll back in the event of error. Automation is the single step which is most conductive to improving ease of management. Result instances and spot instances. A first initial consideration around cost should be the purchasing model for any EC2 instances. Reserved instances represent a one-year or three-year commitments to EC2 instances and can enable up to 75% cost reduction or on-demand for steady-state EC2 workloads. They are idle for 24-7 workloads that must be continually in operation. An application requires no modifications to make use of RIs. An alternative purchasing model is EC2 spot. Spot instances offer unused capacity available at a significant discount, up to 90%. Spot instances receive a two minute warning when the capacity is required back by EC2 and can be suspended and resumed. Workloads which are architected for batch runs, such as analytics and big data workloads, often require little or no modifications to make use of spot instances. Other burstable workloads such as web apps may require some modifications around how they are deployed. A final alternative is on demand. For workloads that are not running in perpetuity, on demand is ideal. Workloads can be deployed, used for as long as required and then terminated. By leveraging some simple automation, such as AWS Lambda, 
and cloud watch alarms, you can schedule the workloads, start and stop at the open and close the business or at other meaningful intervals. This typically requires no modification to the application itself. For workloads that are not 24 seven steady state, this can provide greater cost effectiveness compared to RIs and more certainty and ease of use when compared to stop. In this project, we basically host and run on AWS cloud for production. We use lift and shift strategy for this. And after going through this project, we will learn how to run application workload on AWS cloud using lift and shift strategy. We have this scenario. We have an application services running on physical virtual machine. There could be various services like databases, Oracle, application services like Lamstam, DNS, and various kinds of services that powers our application. We have all this workload in our data center. So many servers running variety of services on the local data center. To manage it, we need multiple teams working around the clock. We need virtualization team for running virtualization platform, data center operation team for data center related operations, monitoring team to monitor 24 seven and system admin team, of course. Now the problem is managing all these servers and teams is complex. It becomes more complex if we want to scale up or scale down, which me needs to be done very regularly. There's a huge cost for procuring resources and also regular maintenance cost. Most of the process in this will be manual if you have a virtualization layer on the top of it. It's possible to automate those things, but it's really difficult to do it and also to maintain it. And not to mention all of these things, all these things are really very really time consuming. To solve this problem, the solution to this problem is to have a cloud computing setup. So instead of running our workload in the data center, we run it on cloud computing platform where we don't pay for upfront cost for procuring the resources we pay as we go. Consuming infrastructure as service, just like electricity, we get flexibility. It's elastic in nature. We can easily scale in and scale out and really control our cost. So managing infrastructure becomes easier. And most important we can do is automation. We can automate each and every step and the process to avoid human errors and save our time, of course. AWS services. We are using AWS cloud computing. The services that we are going to use in this project are EC2 instances, virtual machines for Tomcat, RabbitMQ, Memcache, MySQL servers, elastic load balancers, auto scaling, that is auto, for automation for VM scaling, S3 AFS storage, root 53, that is a private DNS server. Along with this, we shall be using IAM, ICM, EBS, et cetera, et cetera. So as the objective for this project, we want a flexible infrastructure, pay as we go model with no upfront cost. And we need to modernize our application more effectively by using AWS service. We also want infrastructure as a code so for this, uh, the AWS services that are needed are EC2 instance, ELB, auto scaling, EFS or S3 for storage, Amazon certificate manager, root 53 service. 
once we have our stack on AWS Cloud, our architectural design will be like this. Users will access our website by using URL. And that URL will point to an endpoint. This entry will be mentioned in code ID DNS. User browsers or the app will use this endpoint to connect to the load balancer by using HTTPS. The certificate for HTTPS encryption will be mentioned in ACM Certificate Manager service. User will access application load balancer endpoint and our, our load balancer will be in the security group and will allow HTTP traffic. And then our application load balancer will route the request to the Tomcat instance. Apache Tomcat service will be running on some set of EC2 instances, which will be managed by our auto scaling group. As per high load or low load, the instance capacity will be scaled out or scaled in. These EC2 instances where Tomcat is running will have separate security group and will only allow traffic on port 8080 from the load balancer. We know our application sits on Tomcat instance and our application needs backend servers, which are MySQL, RabbitMQ, Memcache. Information of backend services or backend server IP address will be mentioned in root 53 private DNS zones. So Tomcat instance will access backend server with the name which will be mentioned in root 53 private DNS with the private IP address of backend server will be mentioned. These backend EC2 instance, which will be running MySQL RabbitMQ will be in a separate security group. So the AWS services, which are in use over here are Amazon Certificate Manager for HTTP certificates, application load balancer, set of EC2 instance for Tomcat, Memcache, RabbitMQ, MySQL, three separate security groups, Amazon Route 53 for DNS private zones. There also will be Amazon S3 bucket to store and our uh, software artifacts. For this project, the flow of the execution will go in this way. Login to AWS account, create key peers, create security groups, launch instances with user instances, update IP to name mapping in root 53, build application from the source code, upload to S3 bucket, download artifact to Tomcat EC2 instance, set up ELB with HTTPS, that is the certificate from ACM, map ELB endpoint to website name in GoDaddy DNS, verify, and finally, build auto scaling group for Tomcat instance. 